When you have come into the land that the Almighty your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Almighty your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Almighty your God will choose as a dwelling for the name of the divine. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say, Today I declare to the Almighty your God that I have come into the land that the Almighty swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Almighty your God, you shall make this response before the Almighty your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor who went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Almighty, the God of our ancestors. God heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Almighty brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And God brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O God, have given me. You shall set it down before the Almighty your God and bow down before the Almighty your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Almighty your God has given to you and to your house. This is one of the lectionary, the assigned texts for Thanksgiving that you just heard. And it talks about why we give tithes and offerings. It really does. It tells us that when we come into the land that God has promised us, the first thing we should do is give back to God a portion. It tells us to bow down before God and give God thanks. It remembers from whence we've come and where we are now and thanks God in advance for the blessings. Amen? When we give of our tithes and offerings, we are living out this passage. So even on a day when it's cold and icy, are you thankful? Can you give God thanks for something? Do you have a gift to give God in appreciation for what God has done for you? And notice this, we always, especially in the United States here, we talk about Thanksgiving and pilgrims and we talk about pilgrims and Native Americans sitting down together and we have all those kind of traditional stories. But would you hear it in the biblical story? Then you together with the Levites, which is the priestly group, and the aliens who reside among you, because they had come through some different lands and others had joined with the Israelites. They were to sit with everyone. This is one of those texts of inclusivity. Another text of inclusivity. To sit with everyone. You know, I often joke because some of the translations say the resident alien. And those of us who are green card carriers know that on a green card it actually says resident alien. There's no such thing technically as a green card. But someone who has one is called a resident alien. Here is one of the texts that invites us to sit down with immigrants, to sit down with the resident alien, to sit down with your own folk, to sit down with the instruction of God and give God thanks and praise. When we give our tithes and offerings, we are doing so in an ancient tradition. Acknowledging, as I said, where we have come from and all that God has brought us through. It doesn't tell us that we are without challenge, amen? But acknowledging all that God has brought us through and we give thanks to God and we take that first fruit, the first fruit of our harvest, which for us now we find in financial because the first fruit of our harvest comes from our jobs or from our social security. It comes from the monies that we've received and we give back to God a portion of it in thanksgiving for the bounty that God has given to us and to our households. So I invite you to give with thanksgiving today. God is our refuge and our strength, a very has present help in time of trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, 
though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The king, kingdoms totter. God speaks. The earth melts. The almighty God of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our strength. Selah. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The almighty God of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. God is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. So as I said earlier, I am grateful, thankful that you braved the cold and the threat of weather to be in God's house today. So thank you. And it is honor of God that you come to worship. You know, it's not to be seen, amen? But it's to be with one another and to be in the house of God. So bless you. You are blessed for being here. Do you feel blessed so far? Amen. <laughs> Many of you have participated in this month on Facebook of posting things that you're grateful for. There's lots of different exercises that happen in the month of November and it even begins for many in October of saying what you're grateful for, what you're thankful for. So you have some practice at thinking about what you're grateful for. And as we are here on this Thanksgiving Sunday, this Sunday closest to the celebration that our, we have in our secular world of Thanksgiving, we want to incorporate Thanksgiving into this service. I want to hear what you are grateful for. It is a moment of actual participation, not just the pastor talking to you, but what you are grateful for. As I said, you've had practice thinking about these things. So I, I want you to think what you are grateful for this morning. And if you would, just to get us beginning with this, if you would turn to a neighbor and share one thing that you are grateful or thankful for this day, share with somebody that's nearby you. Now I'm going to invite you to go deeper. Think about what you're really grateful for. And if it's possible, if you have the comfort, if you would just call that out today. Your thanksgivings. Because it says that we are to let God know what we are grateful for. Jobs. <laughs> Somebody said jobs. But jobs. <laughs> for those who are unemployed, yes. I know that you're grateful for the jobs you've had and the job that you believe will be coming soon. Amen? Other things you're thankful for. Just as much as we are to thank the people who love us and thank them for their patience with us when we're unlovable, those moments when we're less than agreeable, irritable, grumpy, impatient, and yet they still love us. Can you give thanks to God for loving you when you are grumpy, demanding, impatient, mad, feeling ungrateful. Can you love the divine for loving you in those moments? Scripture says that God inhabits the praises of God's people. I kind of imagine God saying, I live for the applause, applause, applause. I live for the applause, applause. I live for the applause. <laughs> You like that? Okay. It's a way of understanding that the applause, the praise, gives joy to God's heart. 
Why would we not want to thank God for who God is and what God has done and is doing? Seriously, God inhabits the praises, the applause of God's people. You go to a concert and applaud. Even when it's bad, you have polite applause. I'm serious. Is that true? <laughs> so here is God, the divine. Do we not want to applaud God? Would you do that this morning? Give a praise offering. Seriously. How grateful are you? How good is God? So now I want to hear, now that I'm, I'm kind of trying to motivate you a little bit more, what else are you thankful to God for? What can you say thank you to God for this morning with strength and courage in your voice? Health. Health. Family. Food. Good. Warmth. Warmth. Feel it. The air is working here. It was not working in the front of the church, but the air is working here. Praise God. It's a little thing, but wouldn't it be more uncomfortable for us to be worshiping when it was cold in here? Could we still worship when it was cold in here? Absolutely. And I believe we would just huddle together a little closer. Amen. Maybe keep our jackets on. But there are people who do worship outdoors. Amen. What else are you thankful for today? Hope for the future. A sound mind. Seriously. Troops. What else? The dark. The dark of night. The, the winter. The, wi the outside dark. And then the winter of our soul sometimes. The winter that even comes upon the earth. Some of us are, hel are glad for the freeze that comes because it gets rid of some of the pests. Yeah? Yeah. I saw somebody on Facebook this week said the mosquitoes had moved indoors. <laughs> I felt for that individual. But the cold serves its purpose in the cycle of life, doesn't it? In our part of the world, we need it. The plants need it. We can't just have the season that is our favorite all year long, right? There's a reason in God's wisdom for that cycle. The same thing in our own spirits. Like the song we sang, maybe your blessings come through raindrops. When you live in a drought, don't you thank God for the raindrops? Blessings come in many ways. Yes? What else are you thankful for today? Music. Music that inspires. Music that soothes the soul. Music that's just fun to get your jam on with. What else? Good health. Life itself. Life itself. We have members of this congregation that live with illnesses. We have members of this congregation and you have friends and family members who live with life-threatening illness. People who live with chronic illness. And we also have people who live with near perfect health. God puts us together in relationship to care for one another on the journey, yes? Are you not grateful too that we can support one another and that there's support for you when you need it? Yes? If it's your first time here, you may not know that experience, but I'm going to tell you it's available. I put something on Facebook this week. I just said prayers, God knows. Lots of people that just said, God, I'm going up. Don't. And then there's people that were, you know, texting me separately. What's going on? Are you and Shelly okay? You know, and there's people that, it, it wasn't about gossip. It wasn't about I have to know. It's just, do you need anything? Do you need us to come over? People that will give support, even to the pastor. But people who give, because sometimes, you all love me. I know that. I know that. But there's, there's also a time for me to receive, Right? in that support. And, and there's other people that need that support, and these folks as well. And there's people in our congregation like Amber and Lynn going through anticipatory grief today as Buttercup will move out. And there's other people dealing with things, and we can be, and we are support to one another in those transitions in life, in those changes in life. And for that, I'm grateful that we know how to be of support. Are you grateful that you can give support? grateful that you can give and receive love. 
This church prepares prayer blankets and gives them away. I am thankful for that ministry. Thank you, Catherine, for heading up that ministry and for bringing awareness to us about it. Last week we did a prayer blanket for a young man who was struggling and we were able to send prayers and blessings with that prayer blanket and I know that it meant a lot to that family. And I know it meant a lot to that young man. There's ways in which we can literally wrap someone with our prayers, with that tangible gift of a blanket. There's so many ways we can give and receive love. True? What else are you grateful to God for? Yes! Grateful for the changes in the laws and the ability to celebrate love. Celebrate love. What else? Grateful for spouses, yes. Anything else? This church. So what does it mean to you to have a church that you can come to and worship? What does that mean to you? A song of freedom. What else? There's lots of churches around, so what does this church mean? Why, what are you thankful to God for about this church? Faith and hope. Love. Acceptance. Freedom to be who you are. You know... It may be because of the weather today, and the weather uh, is more threatening to those who are older, and some of our older members of the congregation should not get out in this weather. Yes, agreed. But some churches I know are struggling in saying they have no young people, and they struggle that their churches are dying because there's no young people. I'm thankful for the young adults and the younger members of our congregation that are here today and always. I'm grateful for those who are in their 20s that are attending this church and participating. I'm grateful for our children. I'm grateful for that 14 year old in our town who called me at 6.30 this morning to see if he could come to church with me. I had to say no because I'm here all day and I don't know if I'll get home out of, out of Dallas tonight. So I had to say no, it's not wise. <laughs> but isn't that wonderful that a 14-year-old would get up at 6.30 in the morning? I'm just saying, to call and ask to come to church. We can give gratitude for that, right? As you go through this week, I hope that you will give God thanks and praise every day, not just focus on the meal. The scripture in Psalm says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So I suspect that as you go through this week, you will still have some challenges. Amen? Some of you will have some challenges driving home today. Some of you, some of us in this city may experience power outages later if this storm gets bad. Yes? But God is our refuge and our strength in times of trouble. We've already been provided for, haven't we? We have already been provided for. Because even if power goes out in your home, you still have a roof over your head. You still have blankets. You still have ways to keep yourself warm. Yes? So there's no need for us to complain about minor inconveniences. We can be grateful for the blessings that we have. Scripture tells us, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There was a volcano... It, uh, Mount Edna went off again yesterday in Italy and it's literally raining rocks in the towns near there. There was a picture on the news this morning of a woman out sweeping her balcony of all the little pebbles that had fallen from the volcano <coughs> as that dust s settles. Even though the earth would shake, God is with us. God is with us in whatever you're facing. And that's enough to give thanks, isn't it? Philippians says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say to you, rejoice. It's not enough to tell us to rejoice one time because we're human beings. True? And stuff comes along that gets us off course. And we forget to be grateful. Stuff can get like sand in little crevices where it doesn't belong. And stuff can get into those attitudes and make us less than grateful, right? 
So the scriptures, if we turn again to scriptures, say rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say to you rejoice. And again, give thanks in all circumstances. You're not giving thanks for the circumstance. Be clear? But you give thanks in the circumstance. Because you have a resource that is bigger than the circumstance. Yes? You are not alone. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Whatever is going on in your life, people, whatever is important to you, whatever you are struggling with, let it be known to God. Now here's the deal. I love it that scripture says this because it acts as if sort of God doesn't know it. We believe that God already knows everything. Right? So then why bother praying? Because it's for us. Exactly. It's for us. Let it be known in prayer with thanksgiving and the supplication. Let your request be made known. So I do both things. I tell God what's going on and I'm thankful that God cares and that God will be in it together. That's my prayer. What's going on that I'm struggling with? I give thanks that God cares. And that together forms my prayer. Let your troubles go before God with thanksgiving. Good or good? Good. And you trust that God is with you. Can we hear the gospel text? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for a food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Humanity will give you. For it is on him that God the Heavenly Parent has set the divine seal. Then they said to him, What must, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. Now, this is a text that we dug into in some more depth earlier this year. It's in the I Am series, and if you'd like to hear a little bit more on this text, you can look at uh, YouTube to one of the sermons on I Am the Bread of Life. Good? Okay, good. Because I'm going to be briefer on it here today and different. Just to focus in on that sentence, I tell you you're looking for me because you saw signs and because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but the food that endures. This is a passage that came in a story of them following Jesus right after the miracle of the loaves and fishes. And, and Jesus had fed the crowds. And Jesus challenges them that they're just following him to look for the next miracle. They're looking for the next thing. Okay? And he says, don't be looking for the next sign. But do the work of God. Do the work of God. So, it's like they're hungry, but hungry for stuff. Do not work for the food that perishes, but the food that endures for eternal life. I'm coming into the week of Thanksgiving, knowing that my freezer and my fridge are very full. And for that, I give God thanks. But partly they're full because I've been planning my menus. And those of you who know me well know that I like to express love with food. I love to cook for the people I love. So as I plan for Thanksgiving and for the people that are coming to stay with us over the holidays, I have been planning my menus. We are blessed because Bobby and Alice will come and spend time with us, 80 and 88 years of age. And they'll be able to come and spend a few days and we'll be able to share together as family and, and eat. I'm blessed because another foster child who's 17 has asked to come and spend Thanksgiving with us. Who will come and has been approved by the system to come spend a few days with us. To be with her chosen family. Family of faith. 17 to 88. Amen. What makes us be one? God. What makes us be one? It could be the food, because, you know. <laughs> but here's the deal. You're longing for the community and the family of God that embraces us all with our differences. 
And we could lose focus of that. We could be working for the Thanksgiving meal. Are you following me? It could become all about the shopping and the menu and the football games and the fixing of the food and the enjoying of the leftovers. And we could do ourselves a disservice and miss the community that is gathering around the food. Are you hearing me? We could miss the spirit by focusing on the food. Do not spend your Thanksgiving working for the food that perishes. The food that will be gone. Get it? Yeah, that can be a sign of love. Yes, it's good. Yes, it's yummy. Yes, you will enjoy. But that's not the main thing. Work for the food that endures for eternal life. And what is that? It really is love. And everything about scripture always comes back to love because we still don't get it. We still don't understand it in its depth. It always comes back to love at a deeper level than we know today. To love one another. To love ourselves and, and to enjoy being alive so that whatever food you do eat this week, you savor every bite and delight in your taste buds. Delight in the smell. Delight in the sight. Today, delight in the warmth of your car and of your home. To let your senses feel the love that's provided for you. And as you gather around tables, be grateful for the life you have, the love you have shared, and the love you can share. And let that love that comes first from God and moves through us, let that love Feed your soul deeply so that you feel satisfied whatever served on the table. You feel deeply soul satisfied. Amen? Let's look beyond counting the blessings and feel the love. Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe in the one whom God sent. Believing is to trust that you will be blessed. I'm going to say better than that. Belief means you are loved. Believing means trusting in the love. And what is to do the work of God? It is to love yourself, love your neighbor, and to love God true or true this Thanksgiving let the love flow let the love be abundant and may it feed your soul